What do you do when your scene partner or your reader for an audition isn't quite up to par or isn't giving you what you need? How do you deal with that situation? Well, depending on the circumstances that you're in, there's a different answer for that question. And I'll talk more about that after the bump. Howdy. Welcome to Augmented Actor, where we help you augment your acting career with tips, tactics, and tech. My name is Doug Fall. What's your name? How do you deal with a crappy reader? There are about five or six different scenarios where you will have another reader or a scene partner. And depending on that situation, the answer to the question, how do you deal with a terrible reader, will be a little bit different. But the overriding theme, the thing that you want to remember more than anything else, is that you are responsible for your own performance. You are responsible for your role, your lines, your reactions, you're part of it, but that's where your responsibility ends. You're not responsible for what you are given and what the other actor does. In a sense, if another actor is terrible or the reader is terrible, you have to kind of go on and adapt and, and find the most appropriate response. But you can't get into the, the thing of telling another actor what to do, and you can't base your whole performance on what the other actor is going to give you. You have to have a certain level of control over your own performance. So now with that said, let's look at some different scenarios. Scenario number one is you are reading at an audition with an, a hired reader, somebody that the casting director has brought in to read with everybody who is auditioning. That person is usually gonna be a professional. You're rarely gonna find a reader at one of those auditions that can't read properly. But occasionally it might be a director or a stage manager, somebody that doesn't quite know how to read well or stumbles over their words. And in that situation, you kinda just have to ignore them. Even if they're a professional reader, you have to kind of ignore their, their interpretation because they're going to be instructed to be very generic, very low key, and only give you the lines and just a little bit of energy to, uh, to respond to. They're not auditioning. They're gonna be off camera and you, or on the other side of the table and you are the one that's on camera. So it's really, they're looking at how you respond and it's up to you to guide the other person in that direction. So for instance, the other actor is reading a scene and maybe they're not giving you a full, uh, the energy that you need to respond properly. You have to take what they're saying and imagine that you're getting the, uh, the response that you want, the stimulus that you want, and, and heighten their interpretation a little bit to whatever level it needs to be for your, the performance you wanna give. Again, they're looking at you, not at the reader. You also have to be pretty forgiving of those readers because they're often shuffling multiple sides. They're playing the role that you're playing now with another actor and vice versa. And they have a lot of stuff to do. They've got to concentrate on their script. Most professional readers are going to make eye contact with you and try to give you something to play off of. But they're also going to be looking at you to guide them in how they react. So they're going to start off very neutral and then depending on how you respond and how you, uh, what level of energy you're bringing, that will uh, inform them how they should respond to you. So they're looking at you and not the other way around. If you're going to just respond the way that they give you the, the stimulus, then you're going to have a very boring middle of the road audition. Focus on the performance you want to give and don't worry too much about the reader in those situations. Scenario number two is when you are auditioning with other actors, uh, it may be at a callback. You're brought in in groups of two or three or four and you're given scenes to read and you will be flipping parts. Maybe you're being considered for more than one role and maybe the person that you're reading with is being considered for the same role, so you're in competition. In that case, there's a certain level of one-upsmanship that happens as actors are trying to compete for attention and trying to make bold choices. And so in those situations, whether you have a terrible reader or just a very exuberant reader that's trying to draw focus, it's important that you kind of roll with the punches. You have to have a certain element of flexibility in those auditions where you respond to the stimulus that's given you. You have to be flexible enough sometimes to adapt your uh, reading to match what they give you. And then hopefully you'll get a chance to read it again where you can make the bold choice first and they have to respond to you. 
uh, a good director will kind of catch on to those those things and see when somebody's not quite a right pairing they might pair you with somebody else to give you a better chance to read but if somebody's really terrible in those circumstances they're fumbling over their words or whatnot then again you have to kind of shut down their their part of it and be responsible for your own part of it. You might have to adjust how you planned on reacting, how you saw this character or the way it played out. But uh, the best way you can prepare for those kind of auditions is to to read the scene multiple different ways, to read it in the rehearsal room with different actors while you're waiting to kind of see, get an idea of how they might approach the scene and how you can adjust yourself to make bold choices uh, within that, that paradigm. The third scenario is a self-tape audition where you have your own reader that you've asked to come and help you out. The best thing to do here is to ask an actor friend, uh, somebody that you trust. You get to control how many times you rehearse your audition and your your reader is not the focal point. So if they're being very loud if, and yelling at you, direct them to take it down and, and, and say, you know, like, we don't want to hear you, we want to hear me. Give them the chance to rehearse the scene as much as you have had the chance to rehearse the scene. Uh, run it three or four times and ask them if they have any questions about how to interpret a character or whatnot. And then tell them to just play it low key, just read the word, bring the stakes that you wanna to bring to it and uh, forget how you are reacting to that reader. Now, if they're just terrible, if they've just screwed your audition up and you just can't get the right take and you're editing it and it feels terrible, then it's on you to just go find another person to read with you and just refilm your audition. The good thing about self-tape auditions is that you have the chance to do it as many times as it takes to get it right. That's the only time that you can direct your reader to do it the way you want to do it. And don't be a tyrant. Uh, the, again, the auditioners are not auditioning the reader. They'll forgive a, a crappy reader, but try to get as close to a good actor as you can. If you like what you're seeing here on this channel today, I would like to remind you that we have a Facebook group, Augmented Actor, uh, where you can connect with actors from all over the world and discuss acting related subjects. It's really great. I hope you join. I also have a website, augmentedactor.com, and an email list. If you join the email list, I will send you a free memory book, How to Memorize Virtually Anything, just for joining. Let's get back to the show. When you're acting in a stage production against a, a reader, and they're gonna be actually somebody that's cast in the show. This is the tough spot, because sometimes uh, an actor that gets cast in a role won't be as experienced, or they have certain quirks or something like that that just weren't were what you expected. It throws your performance off. Even if you've been directed to do something and they're not giving you what you need, it can make your performance seem crappy because you're not uh, honestly responding to them. Now, hopefully, all this stuff will get kind of ironed out and, and practiced in the rehearsal process and it won't be happening on stage. But sometimes you're just stuck with somebody that doesn't quite reach the level uh, that the other actors are reaching. Uh, the best thing to do there is to be gracious with how you respond. First of all, be very flexible and be willing to play. So if somebody gives you uh, something, uh, Respond in an honest way. Listen to them and truly respond to the stimulus that they're giving you. And this might give them some indication of how to up the stakes a little bit. And hopefully when you do that honestly, the director will notice that, um, that something's off and they'll work with that other actor a, a little bit as well. The other thing you can do is to sort of gently nudge them in the right direction by responding a little bit bigger if it needs to be bigger or a little more dramatic or a little less dramatic, whatever the case may be, give the performance that you wanna give in the rehearsals and let them uh, uh, follow you a little bit. Sometimes you can raise the game of another actor by just being so good yourself. But in, in that process, you need to be a little playful. You can't be too locked in, especially early on in the process, into how you're gonna do a certain role and how you're gonna approach it. Just give your best performance and let the director shape the, the actor. Now, if you're in the run of a show and an actor is goofing off or not giving you what they need, then you know that's something you should take up with your stage manager or the director if you're still in rehearsals and and say you know like i'd really want to do this kind of thing but i'm not getting the stimulus i need are you noticing that is it causing a problem and 
let them give you an honest answer. If they aren't noticing a problem or if they like what the other actor is doing, then that's what you're going to get and you got to work with that. So just be malleable enough to work with it. If they agree with you, then they might take the other actor aside and work with them. But it's not your job to direct the other actor. Your responsibility ends at your part. And then finally is uh, a scene partner or a reader in a film when you're shooting a film. This is a totally different ball game. Uh, now, oftentimes you will be in a long, uh, a two shot with an actor. And so you will get the response that you need from that actor. And the same rules apply if the actor brings something to the table that you didn't expect. That's their job. And your job is to make it gel and make it work with them. But in film, you're going to be shooting an establishing shot perhaps with the actor and then they're going to move into close-ups and medium shots and over the shoulder shots. And during that time, whether an actor is good or not, if you're in your close-up and it's the other person's shoulder that's in the shot, they're not always going to give you that their full performance. And sometimes it might be a stand-in too or, or somebody else that's off camera reading with you that's not going to give you the, at all the energy that you need. So there you've got to remember what happened in the establishing shot and the intensity levels and you also need to think about the distance of the camera and the different sh uh, you know how close it is to you and and work with your performance to match the energy and the intensity level that was given in the previous shots likewise when another actor is reading opposite you and you're off camera you want to try to be as good uh, a reader as you can give them as much energy as possible saving the tears saving the extreme laughter the the nuance but give them something to play off of and hopefully they'll do the, the same thing for you but don't expect it you've got to be so focused on how you respond you're responding to the memory of a performance even sometimes you're laying the groundwork for them to respond to later on uh, so it's a, a totally different ball game and there you're completely in control of the performance that you give you know whichever scenario you're in sometimes you're just going to be working with somebody that just is not so great you're gonna have to be the professional and the professional isn't so concerned with just their performance, but is concerned more with the show. A, a giving actor will give another actor response. They will, they will give them some energy when you're reading opposite somebody. Whatever they give you, you respond honestly to that. Just like you would in real life. If somebody is being placid and boring to you uh, in a conversation, you're gonna mirror their tone a little bit. And perhaps the other actor's idea or the, the, the approach that the other actor makes is going to be the right approach for the scene. So don't be so married to your performance that you forget that it's not all about you. And hopefully the director and the casting director will be uh, good enough that they will shape you and the other actor so that it all fits together. And if not, you just got to roll with the punches. That's it. We're done. If I ever get the chance to read with you, I hope I won't screw up your audition. There's some other videos that you might find of interest on the screen right now. And remember to subscribe and share and like this video. It really helps me out. I will see you next time.